<laughs> so the latest monthly GDP figures show that the UK economy has grown by 0.1% in November. The Football World Cup is believed to have had an impact. However, it remains to be seen whether growth will continue across the full final quarter of 2022. The last quarterly figures showed a 0.3% decline in the economy. So do the November figures bring hope that the UK will now be able to avoid a recession? Well, joining me to discuss all of that is our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, with On The Money. So, Liam, are we in a recession or not? We've got the wrong job, Arlen. We should be <laughs> drinking beers with, with exactly. young Mr Carson there on a Friday afternoon. Exactly. Very nice work if, if you can get it. This is actually some good news, yeah. I may say. I often come here and get accused of being uh, the dismal scientist. The dumpster. The dumpster. <laughs> which uh, that age-old uh, name for economics, the dismal science. But this is actually... Pretty good news, a yeah. chink of light. Green shoots, we might even say. Oh, gracious. Let's no. have a look at some <laughs> of the numbers here. As you say, GDP, that is all goods and so all transactions in the UK economy, increased 0.1% in November compared to the month before. Within the manufacturing sector, there was actually a drop of 0.5%, though the manufacturing sector is yeah. very, very volatile. Services, which make up a huge part of our economy, up 0.2%. And here's the kicker. Beverage and food services Ooh. are whopping 2.2% up on the month before, and that is right there, the Qatar World Cup effect. So does that mean that we will avoid recession? Now, a recession is two successive quarters, three-month periods of economic contraction. Mm -hmm. In the third quarter of last year, July, August, September, we had some economic contraction, as you said, yeah. during your lead-in. So the question is, will we get economic contraction in October, November, December? With this November figure being positive, it may mean that the entire fourth quarter of next year, of this, of last year, sorry, is positive. So we will then avoid that two successive quarters of negative GDP growth. Yeah. Recession, it isn't just a kind of concept, a number. The reality is, if the Bank of England thinks we didn't go into recession and it thinks that the economy will grow faster this year than we previously thought, that's good news, of course, but it may mean that, they're, that they, they'll probably put interest rates up more. They won't worry about the impact mm. of interest rates going up on economic activity as much as they previously would. But overall, these, no this, these November numbers, Arlene, are much, much better than most economists thought. Yeah. They're the official ONS numbers, the Office of National Statistics. They may be revised, uh, but we have to embrace good news where we can get it at the yeah. moment. And I'm sure the government's very happy with this news as well, because, of course, Rishi Sunak has set his target on halving inflation, as you know. So this will be good news for him. It will be good news for him. Uh, on the other hand, he did say, didn't he, in his opening speech of this year, his first big mm -hmm. set-piece speech as Prime Minister, that it, inflation would halve by the end of the year mm. uh, from it's currently, well, the, the latest number is 10.7% mm. in November. We'll get the December number uh, quite soon. But, you know, even the Office of Budget Responsibility says that inflation is going to be like 3.8% by the end of this year. So it's a bit like Rishi Sunak saying, oh, I think June's going to be sunnier than January, and that's because <laughs> of me. You are such a cynic. No, I, I, I just think it's, it's arithmetically inevitable yeah. that inflation is going to go down quite a lot. Uh, I've been predicting that for some time. Mm. We're seeing now energy prices coming down. Yes. Not so much household bills. I think, off, I've said this many times, they'll deny it. I think the Ofgem energy regulator should be examining why household bills aren't coming down faster, mm. given that wholesale energy prices are coming down. But those wholesale energy prices will mean big companies can get cheaper access to energy, and that feeds into, hopefully, lower inflation. So the cost of living squeeze, it's not over yet. No. We could see quite a lot of economic sluggishness mm. in the first half of this year. But I have to say, this November GDP number, it's not too bad. Yeah. And I suppose it goes to show as well that economic forecasts, uh, they certainly are not an exact science. So we were told we were definitely going into a recession, weren't we? And uh, that we would be in a recession by now. And that causes a lot of anxiety for people, Liam. I mean, I, I was speaking to people and they're worried about, you know, household bills and how they're going to find money to go on holiday next year. And yet we now see that this shows that we're not in a recession. Well, whatever you think of her, somebody called Liz Truss yeah. once said from the campaign podium, I was there, economic forecasts are not destiny, and they're absolutely not 
destiny. They are just that, forecasts. Mm. Economists get predictions wrong a lot more than they get them right. And I do think uh, journalists can be guilty of too much doom-mongering yeah. when it comes to the economy. I think a lot of journalists, I have to say this, like to see the UK doing badly, particularly if they voted yeah. Remain and yeah. they're bitter about Brexit. I do think, I don't think this is a conspiracy. I do think there's a kind of group of commentators who like to see, blame everything on Brexit and say yeah. Britain's oh, doing, re doing really badly. Look, oh, no. this GDP number in November is not too bad. I think inflation will tame significantly uh, during 2023 and the cost of living squeeze will ease for most people. That's good news. There's still a great deal of economic uncertainty out there, though. That is also the reality. Yeah. Not least if this ghastly war between Russia and Ukraine... Yeah continues, if there's a real escalation and energy prices spike once again, then all bets are off. Inflation at the end of this year could even be higher than it is now.